Is there any other? I'm trying to put it right up around my hip. Let's walk over here and put it. Hello?
Good morning. My name's Robin, and I'm going to uh, help with the service this morning. On behalf of Trinity, I'd like to extend a few words of welcome before worship. Thank you for gathering with us today, either here in person or online. Trinity is a place that everyone is welcome to worship and praise God. And we will start with opening hymn, 595. They'll know we are Christians, if you'll stand. Thank you. <clears throat> so the opening scripture for today is from Luke 23, 44 through 47. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. We light the candle, uh, the Christ candle, as we acknowledge Christ is with us. May we carry this light of hope and peace and joy and love to the world all around us every day. <clears throat> Would you bow your heads and pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we gather in your presence today with open hearts and minds, ready to worship and praise your holy name. We ask that you bless this time of worship so that we may be uplifted and inspired by your presence. Fill us with your love and grace and help us to honor you in all that we do. Amen. Birthdays this week. Rowan, do you have a birthday on Wednesday? How old are you going to be? Six years old. Well, happy birthday. 
and Abigail on the 17th also, and then Kathy coming up on the 27th, and Greg on the 27th also. So can we sing to Rowan? Happy birthday, Rowan. Are there any other birthdays, anniversaries, any celebrations? No? Okay. Um, just a reminder to get on the church website. We do have some needs for people to sign up for Children's Story coming up and Children's Church Teacher also for later in April. So you can go to the website and sign up there or speak to Susie or Amy or Kathy or Kim and let them know. Bible study is back Wednesday night at 645 um, with the theme of I love my church and it follows what the sermon is. So Kinley wanted me to ask, are there any comments if you want to talk about how Wednesday night was and encourage other people to come? Jenny? I don't know. It's different um, from studying, you know, uh, a book in the Bible. It's it's a little bit more. You learn to know um, your congregation a lot better, and um, it's it's really rewarding when you leave. Um, it just gives you something to think about for the rest of the week. And one of the things that really really stuck with me this week was. Um, we had someone that had attended, and um, Kim Dean said something to her last week, a very positive something. And that just, I mean, it was so simple, but it was just a comment. Well, it was Kim Dean, and she said to this person, she said, I love you. Hmm. And... That person just carried that her, the whole week, and it's just amazing how little things make such a big difference. And I really think that in these Bible studies, you learn, you know, you learn what little, it doesn't take much at all, maybe a smile, a kind word, um, just simple things, but it's, I would invite anybody to come. It's such a continuation of the worship service, mm -hmm. but it's <coughs> more um, informal, I guess I would say. Okay. So everybody's welcome. Wednesday night, <laughs> 6. I'm sorry? Karen's got something to say. Roy. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Do I need that? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Kenley gave us a um, little card. And he asked us three questions, and we all answered it. And then he told us to switch. We switched the cards then, and whoever we got, we're supposed to pray for this week or do something kind or whatever they had on their card. Well, today I came this morning, and I had this on mine because my one remark was about being kind, and then they wrote me a note in it, in the book about being about kindness. Nice. So it's that, it's that kind of thing, and that's that's up my alley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I learn a lot better that way yeah. with things like this. Good job, Kenley. Sounds like it's really successful. Any other comments? <clears throat> Fellowship meal today is chef salad, and there's a ton of food. Even if you didn't bring anything, we want you to stay. And where's Cindy? Oh, thank you to Cindy downstairs for... Um, always making the tables look nice. She handmade little tiny chef's hats and has breadsticks on every table, so it's super cute theme. So please stay today if you can. Uh, the consistory meeting is next Sunday after worship. Do you want to raise your hand if you're on consistory and everybody look around? If you have praises or complaints or things you want to bring up at consistory, you can talk to one of these people. Um, Women's Fellowship Hike, April 20th. Donnie and I are actually going to do a trial run today. We're going to drive over to um, Andy Guest. State Park, which is Front Royal-ish, Bentonville. It's, it's almost an hour exactly from the church. We're going to do a test run today, so I know where we need to park, where we need to be, where the hike is. We might do the hike. I haven't told him that. <clears throat> um, <laughs> it's 
it's only two miles. It's very flat. Um, if you feel like you can't walk, Bryn, and you want to come, um, Susie and I will have camping chairs and blankets where we can sit down and we can take the hike and come back. The hike is an hour, and it's their Blue Bell Trail. Yeah, good. So anybody else too, if you feel like you can't do the hike, walking two miles sounds like too much, you can plop down in the, on our um, chairs or our blankets and wait for us. I will bring plenty of chairs. <laughs> and if you're a husband and you need to come, Don, you're more than welcome. If, if Gary decides he wants to come with Cindy, that's fine. It, it's for the ladies, but anyone who wants to come is more than welcome. Meeting at the church, 1245, Saturday. Leaving here by one to be there for the hike from two to three. Um, bring a snack to share. We'll have a little snack afterwards and uh, then drive back here an hour back. Sunscreen, bug spray, nurse, Kim. Sunscreen, bug spray, lots of water, a good hiking shoes. What? Sunglasses or hat, good walking shoes, all of those things. Okay, and if you have any questions, um, I will be watching the weather. Right now it says it's 20% chance of rain that day, but it's not during the time we're hiking. So um, if I have to change it, I guess we'll send out an email or something. Ascension Day service is coming up. Put it on your calendars for May 9th at 6.30 p.m., and more information will be coming about that later. Are there any other announcements this morning? None? Fellowship pads are at the end of each row. If you will find them and pass them down the row and back, uh, offering box is in the back. Um, this is for the operation of the church on our ministry. <clears throat> if you're uh, watching from home and you want to send in your offering or your tithe, you can mail it to Trinity UCC Timberville, P.O. Box 1112, Timberville, Virginia, 22853. All right, and Melanie, if you want to come up front, Melanie's going to be our special music for today.
Beautiful. <clears throat> Thank you, Melanie. All right, Lee Ellen is going to come up for children's story. Flip them to me. I can just flip them. Can y'all hear me? I think I can. Hi. Well, I hope so. We're sitting right here. Hi, friend. All right. So last week when you guys went downstairs, we started talking about love up here and what love means and how we can love our church, but how love can mean different things. Rowan, can you tell me one thing you love? What's something you love? Can you think of something at home you love? Do you, nothing? <laughs> Not me? What about uh, Baby River? <laughs> what about your dog? Do you love your dog? Are you going to be shy? I know you love pizza. Noah, what's something you love? Video games. Video games? Perfect. Can you think of a person that you love? Six. Oh, that'll work too. <laughs> so when I think about video games or my family, that love's kind of different because I can show my family how much I love them. Why are you being shy that I'm here? But I can't show a video game that I love it, right? That's just an object. Those two kinds of love mean different things. What is this? Chocolate. What do you think about chocolate? Do you think it's delicious or do you think it's yucky? Delicious. Delicious. Do you like chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. We like chocolate, right? Every kid's biggest friend. Yeah, I, I could say I love chocolate because I think it's yummy. I think we should try to make some chocolate. So I've got a bowl here. I'll get it open. I've got a spoon. You want to hold the spoon? You want to hold the spoon? Okay, let's see. All right, um, we'll start with some mustard here. Rowan, can you squeeze some of this? Let's make some chocolate. That's not how you make chocolate. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, you just melt this and then you make it. Well, we're going to pretend this, I want to make another one of these. We're going to pretend that doesn't exist. All right, Noah, here you go. Let's start with some jelly here. Ew. Ew. Hmm. Does it look like chocolate yet? No. No, maybe we need something brown. Let's try some syrup. Chocolate's brown. All right, I feel like this is gonna work. You wanna mix it? Can we mix it? Mix, mix, mix. Um, is this working? <laughs> you don't wanna taste it? Does anybody wanna taste it? No. You don't think it's gonna taste like chocolate? No. You wanna smell it? Does it smell like chocolate? No, it smells like, like, um, like, Waffles? Waffles? I think it smells like vinegar. Vinegar? I think it's that mustard smell. Well, that didn't work very well. You want to know why? Because you don't have chocolate. Uh, well, do you know what chocolate's made of? There's two, there's a bunch of ingredients in chocolate, but I can't make chocolate without cocoa and sugar. And did I bring any cocoa or sugar? No. No. But I thought you can use fruit. Well, maybe. It's got sweet stuff in it, right? But do I have all the stuff I need to make chocolate? No. no. You know what? I'm not going to make you try it. I wouldn't try it. I can't make chocolate without the right ingredients, just like I can't show love without Jesus. He teaches me how to show love to other people. And we can learn about that in the Bible when he shows us, tells us to love everybody, even our enemies. What's an enemy? What? What's an enemy? There's two different types. Okay, tell me. One that you just don't want and don't agree with, and the other one, and the other one's the one that attacks. Okay. War. So someone that's mean. Yeah. Yeah, an enemy might be someone that's mean that hurts us, but Jesus wants and God wants us to love even our enemies. They want us to show everybody love. So I know that I can learn from Jesus how to love everybody. So I have something for you. I can show 
my family love? How can I show my family love? What do you think? Good things. What kind of good things? Like helping people out. Helping people out. Can I give them hugs? Yeah. Can I write them notes or draw them pictures? Yeah. Can I do um, acts of kindness? Like uh -huh. you said, be helpful. How can I show my enemies love? Even though maybe it's hard to show them love because they might hurt your feelings, how can I still show them love? By sending them a note. Maybe by sending them a note. Can I forgive them for when they yeah. do something wrong? Absolutely. So I want to show you some love today. You get a little notepad, and I wrote you a little note to show you love. It says, Jesus loves you. And then I decided maybe you want some real chocolate. Maybe you could show someone some love by sharing your chocolate, or this is like a, a notepad, so you can write someone a note and show them love. And there's a whole bunch, so you can show a bunch of people love. Does that sound good? Yeah? All right, do you guys want to bow your head with me and say a prayer, and then you can pick a bag to show some others some love, okay? Okay. Dear Lord, please guide these children each and every day to love others the way that you want us to. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I got orange, blue, or green. Which one would you like? I want this one. Too. Awesome. I dream, yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want that one. All right. Well, too bad we couldn't make real chocolate. We tried. Thank you, boys. We can make chocolate with mushrooms and ketchup, but mushrooms mean that it makes um, Well, thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Donna. And thank you, Lee Ellen. And uh, I definitely do not want to try that mixture that you made. So I don't think it is. I'm going to turn it on now. Uh, we're at the, the, the point for our prayer concerns. Uh, as you know, each week we, we pray for another congregation. And this week we'll be praying for Zion Mennonite Church. So. Uh, lift them up, um, but then I'll turn it over to praises. What praises do we have going on in our congregation or out in the community? Uh, my friend Renee Johnson came through her open heart surgery where they replaced the valve that they put in before, so she made it out of that and recovering in ICU right now. We've had a few little hiccups, but uh, she made it through the surgery, which is pretty good. She's not uh, completely out of the woods, but the biggest scary part's gone. Yeah. So. And Renee's last name is Nelson? Johnson. Johnson, okay. Mm -hmm. That's, I was like, yeah. Other praises. Several of you may have seen me posting um, over the last couple weeks asking for votes um, for the Daily News record, Best of the Valley. Um, I was nominated in, I don't remember if it was eight, nine, ten different categories, but I did find out that I made it to the top five in all of them. Oh. <laughs> so I'll be posting again. I'm not supposed to announce it yet on Facebook, but I will be posting in a few weeks um, at middle of, or beginning of May to try and make the top spot. Katie DeLauder also was nominated in um, Under Services Junk Removal, I believe is what it was called, and she also made it to the top five. So right. if you have a moment, it only takes a second to vote, but if you could vote for both of us, I know we'd really appreciate it. All right, that's great. Did we make it? Did Trinity make it into the top five? Right. Other praises. I, I guess mine is that Monday I found out I got the new position at work. So uh, in 
first of May, I will be kind of outside sales for the company. So uh, it's much needed change that I kind of needed. So give praise for that. A definite praise. All right, well, let's move on to concerns. I have two. First, I'd like um, prayer for Jim Cow who's having brain surgery Tuesday at UVA. He's my aunt's stepson, and we, I just found out about it, and his wife is a co-worker of Kim's. So prayer for him. And the other one is Sunset Drive United Methodist Church. I talked with a person there yesterday, and that church is super struggling to make ends meet. So let's pray that things turn around for them. All right, we'll, we'll definitely lift the, both those things up. Um, my daughter, Stacy, she's diabetic, and she's on Trilicity, and they, they cannot find any for her anywhere, so right now she has to just eat meat and green vegetables. <clears throat> I have a lifelong friend, Vince Whitmer, who is uh, been a miraculous cancer survivor, and uh, it has reared its ugly head, and he is back in ANOVA again and uh, in serious condition. If you could certainly include him in your prayers. Vince Whitmer? Yes. Okay. All right, well, let's uh, take these to the Lord then. Heavenly Father, we... Um, as always, I thank you for this congregation willing to pray for each other and each other's loved ones and friends in the community uh, that we're willing to share both our praises and our concerns. Lord, we, uh, we praise you. Uh, Renee Johnson, her surgery was successful and she's recovering, Lord, and uh, we, we thank you for that as well as we pray for the process uh, of rehab and all that that she's going to be going through on this journey. We, we praise you that uh, the best of the valley, it's much deserved for both Katie and Jill. And um, thank you for allowing them to use their gifts to benefit uh, so many other people, Lord. Um, continue to encourage them. We thank you, we praise you for Roy's new opportunity, his new job, and Lord, it's a blessing. It's, it's been a long time coming, and we thank you, Lord, for that. Um, and as I shared with Roy, I, I think it'll be an opportunity for him to minister to, to the farmers and the people that he is able to talk to uh, on a regular basis, Lord without the stress of the store to be focused on, Lord. And Lord, the concerns that we have, we, we lift up what's going on in the Middle East right now, Lord, with uh, Israel being on attack by Iran and the struggle in Gaza. And Lord, we, we just pray for peace. We pray for stability. We pray for the needs of the people to be met, Lord. We lift up Jim Kyle and uh, his brain surgery, Lord, that's coming up. We pray for the doctors and nurses that provide the care. We lift up Sunset Drive United Methodist Church with their struggles, Lord. Uh, we ask that their needs can be met 
We pray for their congregation. We pray for Zion's uh, Mennonites congregation too, but for Sunset Drive, Lord, we, we pray that your spirit can be moving there. We ask that you be with Stacy and the, the struggle to find medicine that she needs, Lord. We pray that her prescription can be filled. And for Vince Whitmore, Lord, we, we pray that um, the care that he needs will be provided. We pray for the struggle that he's been through, and we pray for the support that he needs to continue, Lord. And for all the unanswered or unspoken prayers, Lord, we lift those up to you also. In Jesus' name, amen. So I got to do a little set arrangement now. Fences. They come in all shapes and sizes. Um, some of them you can see through. Some of them can hurt. Um, some of them are decorative and look like fortresses. Some of them are metal. Some of them are made out of rock. Some of them are made out of panel. But all of them have like two purposes. What are the purposes of fences? Keep you out or keep you in. So there's two purposes for fences. But I know growing up, we had fences on our property line. One was a metal wire fence that my grandparents had when we had animals before I was born to keep them out of the neighbor's field. And then on the other side was a wooden white plank fence that I hated because you had to paint it like every two years and that was one of the jobs that you had to go white wash the fence. But neither one of those fences kept me out of the neighbor's yard. Um, but, you know, not all fences are made out of wood or stone. I remember that me and Amy, we were uh, started to attend a, a church, and this lady came, was just telling us all about this small group that she was a part of, and it was amazing, and all these great people, and there were kids there, and we had kids, and it would be great. And after she got finished telling us all about the small group, she says, but it's full. We're not taking anybody else. So fences can be made by people too. We are going to continue our series on I Love My Church, and we're going to be dealing with this concept, and it's going to be a big part of our service today, and, and how it relates to God's plan for the church, and that would be for connective lives. God wants us to live in connection with him, but also with each other, because he wants community. But what does all that have to deal with fences? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about. But first, let's look at some scripture this morning from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart 
with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as in habit of some are doing, but encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. All right. Before we start to unpack that, I want to go back to fences. And I want you to picture your life like a yard. Your life is a yard. And if we're honest, we have to admit that we're pretty good at building fences. What we are comfortable showing people and letting people see is our front yard. We'll keep the grass mowed, weed eated. We, we will trim the shrubs. We might even plant some flowers around the tree. And we will put a welcome mat at our front door, but it may only be decorative. That's the front yard that we're willing to show everyone. But the backyard is a little bit different. That's where the real us lives. And you're only invited there. It's invitation only. You can't just walk into the backyard. In fact, I'm going to build a fence because I'm not sure I want you to get to know the real me. I don't want you to see the parts of my life that aren't pristine, and I don't want you to be stepping in my messes. And I'm not even sure that we can have a meal together because my backyard is private. Everything in the front of the house you can see, and I will show you, and I will present that to you, but behind that fence... I'm not letting you in. This is the yard of our lives. But here's the deal, folks. God isn't a big fan of fences. Okay, he doesn't have a problem with real fences. We're using this as a metaphor. So, Mark, don't tear down that beautiful fence that you have in your backyard. It's beautiful. And... Fences have real fences. You can keep your kids in there and keep dogs and all that. We are talking about these fences that we make as humans. So those fences that block us from having relationship with God and having community with everyone else, that's what God wants us to rethink. So if we intend to be the church God wants us to be, then we have to acknowledge some things. One, know that Jesus crashed the fence. Before we can talk about a fence between me and my neighbor or me and you, we have to acknowledge that there's a barrier between us and God. And that's what the first part of Hebrews is talking about. It says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. You see, Paul is talking about here, it's because of Jesus we have a way to get back to God. And if you're not familiar with this whole curtain thing, there used to be this curtain that would separate everybody from God. The Holy of Holies would be this curtain that only the high priest could go into. But see, Jesus comes and he knocks down the fence. He tears the fence down. 
We see this in Luke 23, part of what Robin read this morning. It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land, three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. When Jesus died, that curtain that was used to separate us from God was torn in two. We were able to draw near to God. For us, me and you, breaking that fence that separates us from God is as easy as admitting to him that we need him in our lives. We're not able to do this by ourselves. And we will never make it into his presence if we still have a fence between us. Romans gives us a, a lot of concrete information as we look at this text. Romans chapter 3, verses 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we all have a fence or sin that is between us and God. Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So because of our sin, we cannot get to God. And if we continue to have that barrier, we will die. We will not have that everlasting life if we are not in relationship, if there's still that barrier between you and your Savior. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God knew that we had sin even before we were born, even before we had a yard to put up a fence, it was already there. But the good news comes in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith, and you are saved. So if we admit that we have sin in our life, and we need that sin to be taken away, and that barrier there, Jesus will crash through that fence for us. And the great thing about this, if we look at Romans 10, verse 13, he says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus is not picking and choosing whose fence he's going to crash through. If you want it, if you accept him, he's going to go through that fence for you. So, we are born building fences. And we use them to protect ourselves. We we use it to hide ourselves from others. But what it's really doing is it's keeping us separated from God. And our first fence, what keeps us from that true community with him. And it's only when we admit our failing and we realize and accept that Jesus on the cross crashed through our fence. And it's only because that we have a relationship with God that we can truly have community with him. So have you ever drawn near to God? Have you allowed that fence to be broken through? Have you acknowledged Jesus, what he has done for you on the cross, allowing you to be near him. You got to realize that barrier between you and Jesus has been crashed through by him on the cross. That sacrifice. 
has given you that opportunity to surrender your life to Him and to draw nearer to Him. But that's not all. He wants you to draw nearer to the community. So you have to allow others in your yard. You know, we, we come into this building and we can sing songs and we can play with kids and we can eat sometimes and we can smile at each other and we can say good morning. But we do that all behind fences. And you might say, well, Pastor, you just said Jesus broke down the fence. He does. But how does that impact us and relating to other people? Imagine all of mankind was there when the curtain was torn. And we could see it and we saw it happen. And we know that Jesus had that veil torn for each one of us. And it allows us to become followers of Jesus. There's no fence anymore. That means there's no fence in existence in the community of God. Well, there, there shouldn't be. But you know what we, we like to do? We like to start picking up that wood again. And Jesus may knock down that fence for us, but you know what? Between me and other people, I'm going to build that fence right back. Even though that Jesus has crashed that fence, we still want people only in the pretty part of our yard. We don't want them to see our laundry hanging on the clothesline, whether it's dirty or clean. We don't want them in the back. So we keep on building our walls. And we keep close tabs on who's walking through our yard. We watch. We don't want somebody coming into our yard unless it's okay with us. Yet, I don't want you to forget last week what we said. If we're really going to truly experience loving our church, that means we intentionally love our church. That means not only our buildings and not loving our programs, it's if we're going to intentionally love our church, that means we have to love each other. And loving each other is impossible behind a fence. So what do we do? With the fences that we have erected, myself included, what do we do with those fences? It's hard to truly know how to love each other. But Paul gives us a prescription. In verse 25, it says, Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but in encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day is approaching. Now, some pastors use this scripture to try to get congregants in the pews on Sunday morning. But in reality, what Paul is saying here, it's something bigger. Sunday morning is important, but he's also saying, he's talking about everyday assembling, everyday relationship. He's talking about living life together. He's talking about living in community. You see, community means that we don't build fences. Community means that we go below the surface. Community means that we're authentic with each other. We share ourselves. We have a deeper relationship than we can have just sitting in the pews, listening to someone like myself talk to you for a half an hour. Community means standing in someone's yard and allowing someone to stand in yours. Both whether they are stinky, unkept, dirty, full of toys, whether they are weeds that need to be pulled or whether there's a building that needs to be painted, we let them in. How many of you remember the, the TV show that Tim Allen had, Home Improvement? And they had that neighbor, Wilson, right? 
What was Wilson always behind? There was always a barrier between him and the tailors. You didn't see him coming over and having a meal with, didn't see him coming and sitting around a fire, a fire pit. And sometimes that's what church folks are like. We sit in pews with people and maybe we serve on the same ministries and maybe we enjoy Bible study, but we never see the person's whole face. We only get a glimpse of what's behind the fence. You know, John Doe is over here, and I don't really know a lot about him. I hear that his family's going through some hard times, but I don't know. Or me, my wife, and his wife are having a spat, so me and John Doe, we cannot really get connected because there's another fence there in the way. Fences impede community. And we have to be willing to get in each other's yards. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but in encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. So, whose yard are you in? Who are you allowing into your yard? We do have Sunday school, and we have Bible study, and we have crochet class, and we have loads of love, and we have outreach opportunities, and we have fellowship meal. And I'm aware not everyone is a social butterfly but we all need to take small steps. If we are truly going to experience not only the church, but also the life that God intended it to have, we cannot hide behind a fence. To truly love your church, you have to love someone in the church. That doesn't mean that you're going to be transformed into this super social extrovert. But what it means is you don't live in isolation. Community is standing in someone's yard and allowing someone to stand in yours. And when we do that, we, we get to enjoy company with each other, right? But I want you to imagine for a second that you're going to a you're a kid and you're going to somebody's birthday party. Rowan, I hope this is not your birthday party. And so you get to this party and all they have is a plain bag of potato chips and some weak Kool-Aid and there's no cake, there's no games, there's no face painting, there's no pin to tail on the donkey, there's none of that. And you would think this is a pretty dull party and you would probably think the host didn't even try let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds we have to consider we have to have a plan it it doesn't happen magically when you just think some of us have to actually strategize how this is going to work for us. You know, living in one another's yard without fences is going to take some intentional and some strategy. These two guys figured out, even though they had a fence, they're still going to be able to get together. Community is finding ways to encourage one another with love and good deeds beyond church programming and beyond sermons. It's seen beyond the walls and the fences that have been built up. And offering to paint that building or pull those weeds or babysit or be the meal that somebody needs when they're in crisis or do you have somebody's church phone number in case you're broken down on 81? Who are you going to call? 
or who you're going to go on a double date with, or who you're going to invite over to supper, or who's going to serve with you on a ministry. It's enjoying one another. It's helping each other in, to enjoy Jesus in the time that we have left to serve according to Hebrews. And the thing is, these things don't happen automatically. They happen when we consider how to make them happen. So we have to have a strategy, but within that strategy, we have to have healthy expectations. Unhealthy expectations would be that you're going to know every single person in our church and you're going to become friends with them immediately. Well, that's not realistic. Healthy expectations is that you're going to build friendships and that you're going to have some people over and you're going to let some people into your backyard. And it's going to take some time. But you have to have a goal in mind. You have to have a plan. And you got to realize that it takes baby steps. So living without fences means that you're not going, it doesn't mean that you're going to know everyone really closely the first time you meet them. That's not a goal that is healthy at all. At first, it may be hanging out in the front yard. And maybe then it's having a meal. And then maybe after a while, you get into the backyard where you get below the surface. And it takes time, and that's okay. And you won't let everyone in, but we need to be working to let someone in. And you have to take ownership. And you have to realize it's everybody's job, it's not everyone else's job. When I say that, sometimes in church we think somebody else will do that. We all need to work at it. And if you're sitting down waiting for everyone to come to you, then you're sitting in the wrong spot. I want you to think about this for a second. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest, how much effort are you putting in connecting with other people in the church? What's your number? Don't say it out loud. Think about it. Now, what would it take over the next few weeks to bump that number up by one or two numbers? So as you leave church today, reminder that Jesus crashed the fence so that you can get in a relationship with him. Enjoy that company with God, but allow others into your yard so that you can build that community. Today, the church has given you an opportunity for that first step. Invest in you so that you can connect with other people. Even if you don't like salad, even if you don't, didn't bring anything at all. If you don't like salad, there's dessert. <laughs> even if you're like, I never stay for those things. I challenge you to, to, to make the effort. And on top of that, if you always come to those things, how often do you set with the exact same people? If you set with the exact same people, there's fences that you are never taking down because they stay there. So the challenge is, can you take down a fence today? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for your words today, this message, and I, I thank you how you have allowed us to think about community in a different way, to think about how we can connect with you closer than we ever have before if we allow that to happen, but also how we can encourage others, how we can grow 
when we let other people into our lives. And Lord, I know it's hard to think about letting someone into that, that dirty part or the, the unclean part of our lives, but that's where we have people to help us walk through our lives. Give us the courage to remove some fences. Let us pray the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us for evil. For our thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will uh, have our praise song next. There it goes. There you go. I don't know who brought that. Okay. Our, um,